I mean, I haven't picked up a golf stick for um, two years. So have I retired? No, I don't think so. So I haven't sung opera for a couple of years. But, you know, sometimes I might not do that one again because, I mean, you haven't seen me do traviata or flute or anything for many, many, many years, but there are lots of things I can do. But as to retirement, the press, absolutely, because there's no other word for it. You know, I haven't, haven't actually got any plans to die either. So, I mean, that could be on the cards as well before I tra retire. In, everyone makes their, their choice. Do they want to pack the bags anymore? Well, that's the thing that will get me. This, the, this, the traveling and the suitcases. That's the thing that will tie me up before the singing will. But in, in order to keep my voice in good trim, I train a lot. Um, from the very, very first days of studying, I, I always went to a singing teacher. I never not had singing lessons. I had four hours at least a week, which were incredibly expensive. And then, I, as I got a little bit more money and, and uh, a little bit wiser, I learned how to do it myself, but along with still playing singing lessons. And further, as a, the more I got into my career, the more singing lessons I had. And then coming out of my career at this stage of my life, working with young students, I'm just putting it all back into them, and it's, I'm sort of doing the same vocalises as I did 40 years ago. So it's all going back. It's like a big turning circle. I'll put it this way, I sing sometimes at night and I start the phone calls from about midnight until the following day and then I just keep on going with either fundraising or finding the, the whatever the students want. I have them down to my house to, to try and help them. I have a planned weekend, the weekend I get back uh, with the pianist and get all the students down because we're doing a concert in London and I've been asked to provide some young students for that concert. So I've got Lucy Ray really in Mexico and New Zealand. So that's all in the plans. I've got to get the conductor get together. I've got to the pianist. I've got to get you know everything ready, piano tuned. Then we do a whole weekend for the program in um, at the Tower, the Tower of London. But I'm giving a lot of vocal coaching and a lot of mentoring um, because we dress up some of our students. We send them off to doctors. My foundation pays for that for New Zealand students. We I find money for the Australians when I can. Uh, I've got some very, very good Australian singers over there, all, as I said, starving, <laughs> all needing money. And um, just in general, working and work and looking for students, looking for the next generation of class classical singer coming through, next really, and trying to keep them on the straight and narrow and trying to keep them in there for 20 years, rather than a five-year five, five year wonder, as quite a lot of them do. They, they last for five years and then they, they just fall over. You know, they'll, they'll get so far, and then you feel, now please ask me the question, am I going to make it through the A, A plus, and double plus, and all that stuff? And they never ask the question, so of course you can't give them the answer that they really should be asking the question for. So a lot of them, I, if I don't finance them, they'll never get the answer.